All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a quality of life upgrade in the Q7. As you know, we are outfitting our Q7 to be our off-road rig, and we're making some very good updates and some good progress with this thing. We do have a roof rack on the way. We've got a lift coming. We are tuned and deleted and all that good stuff. But one of the things that bugs me the most about my Q7 in the couple months that I've owned it already is the infotainment system is extremely outdated compared to anything that you could get in today's vehicles. Now, it's not super old school. It is a very decently sized screen, but we need to upgrade it to something a little bit bigger. So, now you guys know I do love parts delivery day, but there's something about getting parts from overseas that makes it just that more exciting. So as you can tell, we did get something from the good old AliExpress. So let's open up and check this bad boy out. Because inside this box is hopefully something that's gonna make the Q7 feel a whole lot more modern than it does right now. And God damn, look at the size of the screen on this bad boy. I don't even know how many inches that is. I think that's like almost 12. But we've got a ginormous screen that we're gonna be putting into the Q7. That's a full like dash bezel replacement. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that install today because I've seen some people do this install, but there isn't a single person that has done this that speaks English yet. And as these things, like I've said a hundred times, especially the diesels are coming out of warranty, people are gonna wanna buy these. And being able to do upgrades like this is almost essential to any car that you wanna have to make it feel modern. So let's jump in the Q7 and please forgive me as I'm probably gonna be sweaty in this video as it's 35 degrees Celsius outside and uh, my garage isn't, isn't exactly cool either and we need some lighting so i'm gonna have to have the garage door open so i apologize in advance and we're gonna struggle through this all together but let's jump in the q7 start pulling some stuff apart test this thing out and hopefully throw it in with no issues today because if i can do this in one go that would be awesome let's do it so first thing we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna remove all of the trim stuff that needs to be done now i'm gonna use the tools they provided in the kit to remove all of the little trim pieces just because i know some people aren't probably gonna have the tools that i have access to to do this honestly not going to be very difficult so we're going to start there's a little trim piece right along the back side of the steering wheel here that i will pull you guys off to show you this guy right along here we're going to pull this off it should be fairly simple to do so just like that and then next we are moving on to the vent section here I love how I said I was gonna use the uh, the Chinese ones just to show you guys that you could do it with those, but uh, here we are. I can't lie, I don't know how good these instructions are gonna be because I have a feeling I should be taking the, uh, the radio out first, which honestly I might do in a second because this might break. All the connections in the back of here. Okay, those are all out. And then we have a another T20 just under to the right, right here. We're gonna reach up behind the buttons in here, and apparently we're supposed to be able to just push them out. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna happen. So. Okay, so there's one really important tool that I forgot to mention that you guys are going to need to be able to take the head unit portion of the Q7 out. And these, I don't think are the exact ones because I do have a couple different sets, but you're going to need these radio, woo, these radio keys to basically take the CD changer out. And I'll show you where those go really quickly. So in your Q7, you have the head unit as I'm going to call it, which is this guy right here. And you're going to go ahead and put these little keys in, one on this side, and you're going to push it till it clicks. And then you're going to put one in on this side as well. Push that in till it clicks. And then it will unlock and you're able to just kind of pull the head unit out. And I, I, I did this off camera, so I'm just kind of filming this after, so that's my bad, but it's super simple. And I'll link a kit to get the keys for this because there are some set, some different ones. And you'll need that because I didn't actually get it in the kit that came with the radio. And I'm not sure if it was supposed to come with it, but yeah. 
Okay, so they kind of just tell you to pull these out, but they don't exactly tell you how. So I've kind of scratched a little bit of the original thing, but we've got another T20 behind that one as well that we're gonna go ahead and remove. There's one on both sides. Okay, now the whole thing should just come out. on the back here and see China tools to get that off there and then it should just be the two little deck connections on the back okay boom this guy's out so we're gonna have to swap that and we'll do that in a second because now we have to remove the climate control apparently Okay, and I'll take you guys off for this one because this is a little bit of a pain in the ass. So, so down in here, there are gonna be these little tabs that you're gonna need to push. So like stick a flathead or something in just like this and kind of push up and it'll loosen the little locking tabs that hold this guy in here. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to put the Q7 in neutral. So I'm gonna have to grab my keys, but it's super simple, not very hard. Okay, so with the Q7 in neutral, parking brake's obviously on. I can now pull this all the way out. Now I'm going to turn the car back off before I pull all of this uh, because it's probably going to have a huge meltdown. So I'm going to do that now. There's all these cables in the back. Don't forget to take all those out. Don't break anything. Okay, so there's a little jumper we're going to connect here. So there's a 16 pin jumper. We're going to connect to the brown one here. So this is the one closest to the driver's side, which is left-hand drive if you're in North America. So I'm actually just going to quickly route this though because i don't really know how the hell all of this is gonna get routed properly without like the cable management getting crazy so but this i guess can all go in here so i guess this needs to go through here and then up somehow that's gonna go like this so this is gonna get connected to here that can go in there. Oh, we don't need this because I'm not connecting any of the OBD crap. This can go like this. What else do we have to connect? This. I don't know what the hell that is. Um, okay, well, let's try and... Okay, so that no longer works. That's not good. Okay. Oh, let's plug this guy in get anything any music before I button this all up hold on I forgot a step oh yeah okay so that's where all my missing cables still go okay okay I understand now so all the cables in the back of this guy we're gonna slap back on now all right so next up we're gonna go ahead and swap the gauge cluster over to the new frame. So I'm going to grab, we're just gonna need a Phillips, or you can use, I think it's probably like a four mil or a five mil, but we're just gonna use a Phillips head, a really small one. Okay, we're gonna use sockets instead. Like I said, maybe a four or a five, oh, a little bit bigger than a five, five and a half. Beauty, okay. Five and a half mil, take these guys off. Honestly, this whole job hasn't taken very long. I'm gonna swap the old thing out for the new one. And the new one is honestly like pretty damn light. Honestly, I would hope it would fit pretty good for how much I paid for this thing, so. So we're not gonna fully bolt it in right away, obviously, because we need to make sure everything works. So, you do be screaming. Ah. Sorry. Thank you. 
on. Did I turn you on? I don't think I did, but we are now. I have no controls, no steering wheel controls at all, no sound. Oh, there we go. I had it muted. That's why. There we go. Pretty mint. Let me finish mounting it up and we'll show you guys the final thing. Very good, very nice. There we go. The entire unit is now fully installed in the Q7. It looks awesome. I do have a couple of gripes with it. Now, this obviously not being an OEM system, it does have a couple of little gaps around the dashboard that you can't really tell when you're like sitting back in the car. But uh, if you do really look, it does bother me a little bit and I'm sure it won't bother some people because I'm being nitpicky for a $500 system that is now in the car but it does everything fantastic like obviously Apple CarPlay and whatnot which is really cool and I'm probably just gonna have to have blurred out um, the map and everything on there so I don't show you guys but you can go back out into the car menu and everything which is super sweet so you have all of the settings and the functionality of like a regular head unit system to be able to mess around with like the volume and uh, the different equalizer settings and everything and you can actually go right back to the Audi menus as well. So I do have the ability to use all of the Audi functions and stuff with your stock head unit and then it's also still has the reverse camera stuff so it'll switch back and it has the reverse camera the forward camera and stuff is also available on there as well if you do have that package in your Q7 and then it also does integrate all of the original buttons and everything so it has a relocated button set smaller buttons everything works and it's super sweet like the only feature that i mentioned and i already rambled on for like five minutes and i forgot to hit record previously is that the stock audio is what i currently use for the whole system so right now i connect my phone through the factory mmi system in the media because i have bluetooth now if you wanted the audio to work only from the head unit itself you have to connect an aux input out from the back of the head unit into a male input that connects to the mmi in there now i haven't done that yet i'm not sure if i'm gonna do it just because i don't really want to have to use the quality of an aux cable compared to the bluetooth quality of the factory system and the only thing that is the issue there is that when you go from drive to park or reverse to drive the music shuts off for about a second or two and then it comes back on and then also you just don't see uh any of the volume adjustment come up on the screen even in the apple carplay mode like you have no idea how loud your music is but yeah i don't know just one small little thing but other than that it works fantastic uh, i would definitely recommend this for any of you guys that want to modernize your q7 a little bit i know for me this is going to be a bit of a longer term vehicle than what i'm usually used to because it's a diesel and i'm going to off-road it use it to tow some of the projects and stuff around in the future but if you like the video um, i will put a link in the description to the product i don't make any money on the stuff on aliexpress or any stuff like that when i do recommend it and so this is just a genuine recommendation if you guys want to go ahead and pick it up but if you are new here and you want to see other q7 mods do not forget to hit the subscribe button like the video share it with your friends leave me a comment about if you guys want to see anything else or if i can help answer some questions as far as the install goes specifically like i said i apologize in advance for filming the install kind of quickly it's like 30 degrees out in canada right now so sitting around sweating my butt off working inside of the car hasn't been the best experience but we do have a pretty spicy upgrade for the Q7 now. So thank you guys very much for watching today's video. Peace out. I will see you in the next one.